what is up i'm saying thoughts this is the same life and we're back with a continuation with this series we got khalif what if khalifa was goku sister part three like i said i'm enjoying this series you guys are enjoying this series and i believe the last time we left off it was uh the clan guy the got the dude with the long hair I, and then it was another it was a third person but but they was part of the rebel i mean we, we just found out they was all still alive and i guess they come in for goku and Khalifa when they training up above with Kami and stuff like that. So that's the last that's part that was the last that we left off of on part two. So part three, we're gonna see what's going on. We're gonna see we're gonna see how how this this story is twist and turns, man. Like I said, Smug Stick, I believe that's his name. Smug Stick, you're doing a good job with this story arc, and it's really it's really interesting one. Like if this was actually a story arc, I would be intrigued watching it. But without further ado, man, let's get right to the video. We're gonna check it out and we're gonna see what 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 else mugs the guy store for us, man? If you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like, share. Let's get it. Mugs Kami finally stick. accepted them into his ranks. Though they were still someone weaker than Goku was in the original story. Partway through their training, something horrific happened. Kami told them that it was a war brewing below. That artificial yeah. humans were attacking martial artists. Yeah, they were yeah. confused. But they had to go down and check it out. Kami told them that if they left, their training would be incomplete. But Goku and Khalifa could feel it in their hearts that Tien You know they wasn't gonna stay. Trouble. You know they wasn't gonna stay. Careful, as he cannot help them, but allowed them to leave. Once Khalifa and Goku arrived on the surface, they saw that the lands of Korin had been ravaged and burned. Upa and Bora hid, but came out when they saw them. They were looking older than before, almost unrecognizable. Bora explained that their lands were attacked yeah, by that Yeah, he's man. still alive. But he and the clan strange, dude that trained like Tien is still alive too. She knew what this was about, Tao Pai Pai. Part of her was glad to see that he was alive, but he needed to be stopped if he was part of this. It really pained her. Through their training, Goku and Khalifa learned to send Ski. But, to their surprise, they couldn't feel anyone that seemed like Tao. In fact, they couldn't even... That's his name, Tao. General Tao. They Upa and Bora up to Korin, much to their honor, so they would be safe. Then, the kids headed out to search around the world. Starting Goku still in that damn cloud, bro. You seen, you seen your sister got a hoverboard. Get on that shit, bro. They finally felt someone's key, Master Roshi. Quickly, they rushed over to the nearby island and found the source of the problem. A large number of androids and Red Ribbon soldiers were in the middle of a war between what? Roshi, Krill, and Tien, and Yamcha, and a handful of other Red Ribbon soldiers. The leader of the enemy army was none other than Dr. Jiro. Dr. Jiro? There were some soldiers she recognized, the ones that left the army a few years back. This is a huge shock to Khalifa, but before we see what happens there, only around 35% of you guys that watch these videos are subscribed. So don't forget to click the subscribe button down below so you never miss another what if adventure. Anyhow, Khalifa had left the army with the King of Earth, doing some charity work for them while she trained. She didn't expect something like this. Khalifa and Goku descended down in front of the androids. They were mangled and unrefined, clearly unfinished. Nearly all of them fully mechanical. I like that pose by Goku, man. Red Classic Goku well, pose. Including the should-be-dead General Blue and Red himself. From behind, Khalifa felt someone touch her leg. It was violent. Hey, all of the generals from the Red River army are strong, bro. I ain't even gonna lie, they strong. The army that Khalifa left behind, using a lot of the riches there. She loved having limitless amounts of funds. Khalifa did consider her a friend, at least to some degree, so it made her really angry to see her this way. She lifted her up and brought her to Chaozu, telling him to take her far away, maybe to Bulma. Chaozu did as told, flying off, but Blue was about to shoot him down with an eye beam. Much to everyone's surprise, Goku slapped it away. He had gotten incredibly powerful since the last time they met. Grammarly helps bro, these fucking ass, bro. Concise. We ain't no finna start this shit, are. man. We ain't finna sit the fuck off my screen, bro. Violet was the only general who had stayed with Khalifa, who acknowledged her power and grew to believe in her goal of making the world a better place. Khalifa was infuriated. Jiro welcomed Khalifa and Goku sarcastically. Khalifa and Goku tag team and Jiro? For having joined forces with the enemy, he knew that she couldn't be trusted after changing the army the way she did. By all accounts, she should have been a greater leader than Red, but she made them weak. Now look at them. All around Khalifa, her loyal soldiers laid dead, and those who were still alive were scared. Khalifa looked around at the crowd of androids and cyborgs, giving them one last chance to stand down or join her once more, but none of them moved. According to Jiro, he still believed that power was justice, and the Red Ribbon Army was the strongest in the world. <laughs> they needed to control the world. Y'all about to get your ass kicked by Goku and Khalifa. 
Caliphal smirked, saying that the harder he closed his grip, he thought a, he thought an army of humans was stronger than Saiyans. She said that Commander Get out of here, bro. Didn't even want to rule the world, but he told her to shut up. The Z fighters behind them told her and Goku that they tried everything, but those androids were too powerful. These aren't the same androids we know. They are still prototypes and much, much weaker than the likes of Android 17 and 18, but they're still stronger than anyone expected. Chao Tzu finally returned, just to watch Tien, Krillin, Roshi, and Yamcha be attacked by the normal soldiers, as well as Blue and Red, whom Jiro called Androids 10 and 9. Chao Tzu joined in the fight. Khalifa and Goku ran straight to Jiro, with Goku throwing the first punch, but it was caught by something. That clan, old ass clan, bro. that he was no android. At least not yet. So they had to instead fight their mutual friends. The one that caught the fist. He looked like an android Master though. He got a mechanic head. Hermit, but he had pieces of him replaced with android parts. Behind him, Tao Pai Pai walked in. They had both been turned into cyborgs. Jiro explained that both Tao and Shen swore revenge on Goku and Khalifa. After seeing just how powerful he was after becoming a cyborg, Tao invited Shen to become one as well. He refused at first, but Khalifa and Tien's departure from the crane school pushed him to the edge. He ultimately offered himself to Jiro for experiments. They were called Androids 11 and 12, his most powerful creations thus far. The they called them so Android, Android 11 and 12? Was huge, swiping at foes with massive arms and firing rockets from his fingertips. And Android Blue's telekinesis was a massive boost from his inspiration's original power. His presence. I ain't gonna lie, I'm liking that little mechanic head that General Red got. That's, that shit look hard, I ain't gonna lie. Tao and Shen were the most fearsome of all. The augmentations on their bodies had transformed these masters of martial arts into something unreal. Their decades of experience combined with the cutting edge technology made them into the perfect killing machines. They also had a device that they gripped onto that drained a little bit of their enemy's energy, though it wasn't much. It was just a prototype after all. While the androids battled, Jiro realized that he had already won. No one was able to go after him as he popped open a capsule. This nigga a pussy, bruh. That nigga a pussy, bro. Khalifa's best efforts couldn't keep up with Tao and Shen, even when one lucky strike from Goku took out one of Shen's arms. The android simply stared at Goku. The kid apologized. He didn't mean to maim him like that, but Shen smirked. And Goku, why are you apologizing? His crane had opened its mouth and shot a huge concentrated beam that sent Goku flying back into the battle behind them, knocking over Krillin and Blue in the process. Goku struggled to get back up, but Shen landed on top of him and continued to beat him down. <laughs> Why it look like this nigga landed on his nuts, bro? <laughs> bro, it look like uh, uh, General Tao landed on his nuts, bro. Like, what the fuck? Sent Goku flying back into the battle behind them, knocking over Krillin and Blue in the process. Maybe that was just an awkward pit position, like the way the pictures look. It looked like he landed on his nuts. His friends, I could feel the pain in Goku's Android face. Look at it. Jumped on the back of Shen, pulling him back and firing a triple Kamehameha. Shen managed to absorb some of it, but the power was such that the device exploded. Goku thanked his friends and stood tall by them. Meanwhile, Khalifa kept on fighting Tao. She tried to reason with him. Telling him that is not Khalifa, bro. That looks like a man, bro. That is not Khalifa. That looks like a man, bro. He slashed across Khalifa's chest, cutting part of her crane school top. She knew he was too far gone to be saved. But even if she knew she had to defeat him, she just couldn't. Another blast from the crane came ahead, and she looked back to watch Goku block it head on in order to defend his friends. They couldn't come on, Goku. Friends, but before she could say anything else, someone else spoke up. Master Roshi. He told everyone to leave to fight another day. Why? All now turtle school students. Play well, eat well, and rest well. In the end, that's all that mattered. Goku yelled at Roshi to stop. They can still win together, but Krillin right. put a hand on Goku's shoulder, telling him that they needed to go. It took a bit, but Goku accepted it. Oh, why though? They wasn't as even defeated. As they could and follow him, calling down the flying Nimbus so he could ride it while holding the soldiers. Krillin and Yamcha couldn't fly just yet, so Tien and Chao Tzu helped out. Khalifa, without saying another word, opens her aura to push away Tao and flies after them too. Shen is about to fire another beam from his hat, but Master Roshi appears before it, bulking up and smashing Shen into the ground. Hey! Roshi was surrounded. Blue, red, Shen, Tao. Oh, they gonna gank up on the old man? I think he could win like this. He looked straight at Shen. He was once his friend, his partner under Master Mataito. He pleaded with him one more time to join him, extending his hand out. But Shen stood silent, saying that it was too late for him. 
Shen pointed forward, commanding the other cyborgs to attack. As all the various villains began to rush towards him, Master Roshi took one long sigh, cupping his hands to the side. He thought of his students. The final Kamehameha? Final Kamehameha? He was able to help her turn good. That's what really mattered. But above everyone, he thought of Goku and Krillin. He was very proud to see the two of them grow. <laughs> he didn't even think of Yamcha. <laughs> He fired the most powerful Kamehameha thus far. It completely blew everyone away in the island. All the heroes looked back at the explosion with tears in their eyes. Krillin looked at Goku, who shook his head as they sped off. He couldn't feel his master's key anymore. What? The smoke and dust around them settled. Shin and Tao walked towards Roshi. He had damaged them with the Kamehameha greatly, but Shen had gotten him with a Dodompa at the same time. Red informed them that sadly, Blue had been taken down in the blast. Shen said that it didn't matter. Roshi was defeated. All they had left to do was defeat Goku and Kaulifla. For now though, they Roshi's could return dead? to Jiro and get fixed up. They could still recover Blue. Dr. Jiro would spend some time fixing them, telling them that he had begun to make progress towards future androids. Not the Jiro and these damn robots, bro. They leave the soldiers below and bring both Upa and Bora down to welcome them. The two were very grateful to Korin for letting them stay up there, and he says that they're more than welcome anytime. But for now, the fighters need to train. Korin realizes the gravity of the situation once told that Roshi had been killed. After all, he was the only other person to make it up there. He didn't want to use it, and he didn't know how effective it would be since they were already so strong now. But the Ultra Divine Water would be useful. Khalifa wasn't sure, but Krillin and Tien encouraged her. Her and Goku were their only hopes. The two drank it, but realized that it wasn't enough. They just knew it. Korin sighed and said that maybe going to Kami for some more training is the only way. He has some secrets he hasn't told them yet. Goku and Khalifa are surprised, and Korin allows passage to Kami's lookout to all of the Z fighters, who are incredibly surprised. Kami tried to tell them that he can't do anything to help. This is an earthly matter that must be resolved by earthly beings. Their training was incomplete. But bro, ain't no earthlings gonna Khalifa defeat them, bro. To step up, but it was actually Goku to do it this time. He questioned Kami asking how he could be considered the guardian of earth while standing behind and doing nothing while some Ooh. robots killed everyone Khalifa agreed explaining that they know oh these saiyans these saiyans throwing they shade they on kami they don't finish it right now but i mean come on now look at kami bro the man is old bro the, the dude is wrinkled bro look at the nigga's head bro like look come on bro look at kami's head bro like you see how wrinkled that shit is bro like like he's the only man in this whole graphic that got the wrinkled body bro like come on now you, you can't you can't expect Kami and look at his color or look at his color on, on, on like come on now he's a Namek he's a Namekian bro look at his color that shit is faded bro that shit looks old bro, and crusty bro you can't expect him to do anything come on now two students then to Krillin Tien Chiaotzu and Yamcha he sighed telling Popo to take care of the rest and led Goku and Khalifa inside the temple Popo smiled and showed off a little bell the fighters were confused, but they would soon understand. Inside, Kami told the two what he had been keeping from them. It was what is that? Dangerous. The hyperbolic time saver? He opened the door to an endless void. Only the hyperbolic time chamber. Year, and that their training would begin immediately. Goku and Khalifa looked at each other and gulped. But there was a rush of excitement within them. The two high-fived each other and instantly rushed in to begin their training. Hey. Welcome to the time barrier authority. I'm what Miss Minutes. We'll get you in front of a judge in no time. Goku and Kaulifla have an arduous fight ahead of them, so they must prepare. That means that their adventure continues on Saturday, okay. June 5th. Watch out for the next exciting part in this What If Okay, and I'm gonna watch part 4. Thank you so much. I'm gonna watch part 4, but this was interesting. I like how it ended off. It ended off with Goku and Kaulifla. They're gonna be in a hyperbolic time chamber. We're gonna see. We gonna see, bro. I swear to God, if Khalifa, hey, smug stick, I fuck with you. But if you get Khalifa, Super Saiyan God, bro, I promise you, bro, I'm finna go crazy, bro. Stick, her, like, let her achieve Super Saiyan three. But that's it, bro. She don't need to be God level, bro. She don't need to be God level, bro. I already said before, the bitch strong as hell, bro. She don't need God level, bro. But if if he give her God level, I ain't gonna be surprised because they in the hyperbolic time shape, bro. And they saying is they push each other in there, so. I'm I'm looking forward to see how how part four is gonna be. I want to react to part four this week too. Uh, y'all y'all can comment down below whatever you guys you want me to react to. I'm saying thoughts. This is saying lifestyle. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this video down below. If you did, leave a like, share. I'm gonna catch y'all in the next video. I'm out, man. I love y'all.